He's a two-time NBA champion, three-time uh, all-star three-point shootout champion, Craig Hodges. Craig, welcome to the Craig, Odd Couple. what's up, buddy? Oh, brothers, I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, hopefully everybody that's listening is doing well while we're under this uh, virus situation. Yes, thank you for that. And let's get right to it. Um, mm-hmm. I had read this recently. I honestly didn't know this, um, mm-hmm. but – before the 91 finals, and that was obviously after, you know, the whole Rodney King incident with the LAPD, you mm-hmm. had approached, you were playing for the Bulls, you had approached your teammate Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, who was on the Lakers, who you guys were playing, about mm-hmm. boycotting the finals, you know, yeah. as a statement. So tell us, what was your thought process and how did they respond? Well, you know, for me, as you know, I'm I'm blessed, man, to have had great tutelage coming up, and as far as studying the game and, and knowing that, in, in order for me to play sports, my uncles made made it first that I looked and studied the athletes and what was going on during that time. So, for me, one of my recollections was the 1963 All Star Game where Jerry West and Elgin Baylor said they were going to boycott the All Star Game, and through that movement, they were able to create a players' union. So for yeah. me, so for Could, me, precedent, precedent had been set as far as people, our brothers speaking up, and this is what we do as athletes because we understand that as far as negotiations, the level is not a level playing field. That you know you have a board of governors who control the league and they have the ability and the power to shut us down at a given time, whether it be training camp, whether it be during the season like in lockouts in the past. So for me, I was saying at that point in 1991, one of the issues was we don't have enough black ownership, black general managers, black executives, and the like. My position was 21 of the 24 athletes are black. And that if we have any type of, you know, work stoppage, we know how the game works. If the Lakers and the Bulls are getting ready to come out for the first game, and we're not out there by 19 minutes on the clock. Somebody's going to have a problem with that. 15 <laughs> minutes, somebody's coming to the locker room. 10 yeah. minutes, hey, what's going on? Because a billion people are about to watch. So, yeah. like, right now, I look at how the league is scrambling to, you know, salvage this season, sports in general. My position is, once again, the only time players have say-so is All-Star Weekend and playoffs. And that's why I asked us to make that move. And Magic and Michael's response is that 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 was a bit too extreme. Whatever extreme is to me at that point in time, when we're talking about extreme, is players having the ability to take care of their families after the game. Everybody's not a superstar and got superstar pay. Right. Did they and at you know least what? understand? Sorry, Rob. Did they at least understand your perspective, or were they just like, man, that, that's crazy, man? Come on. You know, and, and see, let me share something with you, brother. For me, I'm I'm not. I I give information. You take it, you let it along. I'm not in a position. In hindsight, she did it by myself. But this is, I'm in I'm in the hunt for this ring, just like all my other colleagues. So for me, I see, you know, like where we are today. This whole last dance thing, the the magnitude and the draw of the star and the impact of what Michael brought to the game, but my position was when you got Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, the two icons within black sports and black hero ship, I think the, well, we should take the, the models of the 1963 brothers that got together in the 1968 Olympic challenges and all those type of things. I thought I was blessed to have that as the foundation of my sports and background, so the politics of it, I don't really consider it politics as much as I consider it a spiritual and cultural imperative. Craig, I've always admired um, your willingness to sacrifice to make things happen, to change. That Everything in the world comes with sacrifice, and I think so many mm-hmm. people are too comfortable that they don't understand it. And you did, what you mm-hmm. talked about was the All-Star game. I think it was in New Orleans, Chris that they, they wanted the players to stay in the black hotel or whatever. They couldn't stay where the right. white stars were staying. Mm-hmm. And they were like, mm-hmm. this is ridiculous. This is an all-star mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Why, why can't then, we know, stay? You know, and you know, like for me, it's one of those things where we've glossed over so much. And we've glossed over so much. 
you know, and I look at I look at MJ, I look at the last dance, and I was I was hurt. I'm with the brothers. I'm with the brothers when we when the Pistons is kicking our ass. All right. Right. Now we we put ourselves together. We pulled ourselves together as a spiritual group. Under Phil's tutelage on spirituality, get to some brothers would fall asleep during the Zen sessions, but during them sleep sessions, they were still getting on the same heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? That was experience that we all channeled together, and it might have been a sleep time for others, but it brought us together on something that other teams weren't doing at the time, and along with the system that Tex Winter, Lord bless his soul, put us in, that it was a perfect storm at a time when you know, the mass will put you in a position where at some point in time you're going to grow up or we're going to split up. And our thing was we had a person in, in personage of Michael Jordan that was, was going, not going to let us lose down the stretch. Now how we were going to stay with our game plan down, during the game and that was, you know, it was just a compilation of things, man. So when I'm watching throughout the thing, one of the things is players, we, we call this a fraternity. So I'm watching. Okay, the first episode, I was upset about the cocaine circus. That bothered mm. me because I'm thinking about the brothers who are on that picture with you who have to explain to their family members that they're getting ready to watch this Michael Jordan great documentary event, and they know that you're on the team with them. Now you got to explain that to a 12-year-old boy. I, some mm. Scotty Pippen part. Scotty was selfish. Come on, man. Come on. Mm. And then last night... Then last night, then I tried. Last night with Horace, that hurt my, that hurt me. And I'm letting MJ know, dude, man, that ain't right, dude. Not that one. The other things, okay. But Horace, Horace didn't deserve, Horace didn't deserve to take the fall for Jordan rules. Now MJ may know something else, and if he know Horace wrote it, tell us how Horace did it for my sake, because I'm your teammate, brother, just like they are. And I'm kind of salty about how everybody got interviewed but me. Craig, mm. Craig let me Craig. let me also ask you. Go ahead, Chris. No, go ahead. I was okay, just, yeah, Craig, Craig Hodges, two-time NBA champion, Chicago Bulls, joining the I couple. Craig, the the thing that jumped out at a lot of people as well last night was the whole situation where Jordan's mom asked him to endorse Harvey Gann, who was running for Senate in North Carolina against Jesse Stop right Helms. There. Stop right there. Stop right there. If your mama asks you to yep. do it, <laughs> if your mama asks you to do it, yep. if your mama asks you to do it, enough said. Is that, and even That's 30 right. years later, he can't even acknowledge that, that he made a mistake, that he didn't do the once, right thing at that once time. Once again, and that's, that's why I'm, I'm telling my people who are watching, it's economics in this. It's finances in this. It's money in this. Entertainment is six, seven, eight, nine down the road. You know what I'm saying? It's so much larger than we, what we're catching. So I heard this before. Check this out. I didn't know nothing about the last dance. My son told me about the last dance a week before it came out. And I'm like, what the hell about the last dance? And then I heard about what Phil had put together as a natural for the team. Okay, then I got it. But I was saying... Wow, how long ago did they do this and it's coming out right now? Just the, the mm. timing is, is impeccable as a marketer. Oh, yeah. You couldn't have another time when you got everybody sitting at the crib, you got the number one Nothing icon in black America. Yep. yep. At a time, at a time when black people are dying at untold numbers. Right, right. Why now? Why now? Somebody got to explain that to me. That's why I want that, that question. That question, okay, MJ, I understand you the man, you the golden horseshoe. Everything you touch turned to gold, I get it. Why did you say that people ain't going to like you after this? And then <laughs> last night, it looked to me like Horse was totally surprised. Maybe that's real reality TV or something. I don't know about Hollywood or whatever. But Horse seemed to be surprised that MJ said that he was the one that told about Jordan Rule. Craig, we great stuff. Oh. We could we could have you on. We might have, we gonna have to get you on again. <laughs> After oh, the next episode. Craig, we, we no, but we need you on for an hour 
Because brother, I'm like, telling you. Like I said, man, it, you know, Chris, you know, we met in the airport that time, man. Yep. We've been brothers ever since. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? And I, and like I told you then, that I appreciated your work from afar where, you know, you keep it fair and balanced from this standpoint. You know, we understand, like right now, I'm trying to show, I'm teaching my, my, you know, my sons, you know, how sport works where there's no sports right now. So MJ is the sport right. for everything. So the sport comes out on Sunday night, and that's all we talk about. That's to the all next we Sunday. got. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So we have to understand the magnitude of it. But brother, and like you, you give it, you give it clear. You give brother an opportunity to platform it, to speak that side of it, and y'all keep on with that, man, because people need it. And if, if our generation, I'm 59, if we don't get it, that generation that's 15 to 25, they're getting it, man, and they're actually changing the world. Right. 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 Well, thanks man, a lot, Craig. Craig. Thank you, man. And again, man, I thank y'all for the platform all the time, man. Yep. And tell thank y'all, you. Yeah, peace and blessings to your listeners again, brothers. All right. Thank you. We'll see you. That's Craig thank Hodges, two-time NBA champion with the Chicago Bulls.